Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we are going to discuss some culture methods or culture techniques which are widely used when we work with aerobic bacterial cultures. Okay. So you learn all these methods mostly in your first year itself. So uh, you may get a question like uh, what are the different culture methods? Write a short note on it or describe this particular culture method, etc. So, so from starting of your first year itself, you are given to handle some bacterial cultures. Okay. So from that particular point, you start learning basic practical techniques, which are streaking, isolation, pore plate, spread plate, etc. Right. And you are told to master these techniques as they are the one which you need throughout your course and further when you uh, work in a lab or say if you go for research okay or if you go for a quality control job in pharma industry okay you will need these techniques because these are very basic techniques and we cannot study microbes without isolating them okay yeah the molecular techniques are different but when it comes to a lab wet lab work we need to isolate a particular bacteria or at least we need to test them by culturing okay so these are the techniques which are very very useful so these are culture techniques which we use widely for aerobic cultures and sometimes for anaerobic cultures as well okay so we study these techniques in detail so first what is culturing microbes so culturing means cultivating bacteria in microbiology laboratory not just bacteria uh, fungi algae etc so culturing is you are growing them in uh, or we can say by providing some uh, environmental conditions in which they can grow properly okay optimum growth conditions are given in microbiology lab and we try to culture them grow them okay so growth media so growth media must also be provide or it must provide everything that the bacterial culture needs to live and grow and multiply okay so culture media contains what it contains nutrients and other substances which are required by that particular bacteria okay so uh, there are some enrichment enrichment media there are some selective media or there are some basic media like nutrient agar okay so nutrient agar nutrient broth are the basic uh, uh, media which we first use when we get an unknown sample we try to culture them on nutrient agar nutrient broth if we have a particular aim like we are uh, looking for for say uh, lactose fermenting bacteria then we will go for a selective media okay so media must be prepared in such a way that it is sterile prior to being inoculated with a particular type of bacteria so growth media whenever you use growth media you should uh, use it after sterilization okay so there are different forms of culture media which we will be dealing here and those are first is agar plate then there is agar deep tube okay so this one is uh, a bit different than agar slant agar slant has a slope but agar deep tube does not have a slope okay it is uh, filled completely and the uh, surface area is less and broth okay so agar plate and broth you are uh, most likely to be introduced in first year itself and then maybe uh, maybe in first year or in second year you will get introduced to agar slants which are used for preservation okay now about a septic technique so whenever i am here talking about any kind of method or technique it is to be followed or it is to be used in or under a septic conditions okay so for example here a uh, broth inoculation is to be done okay so you can see here in the first picture itself that there is a disinfectant bottle kept there is a proper clean working table there is a test tube stand burner wire loop okay which are the very basic uh, things which you require so you are working near your uh, bunsen burner the area near your bunsen burner 
and that is the area which we consider as a septic okay good for our microbial work then what you will do you will first uh, heat sterilize your wire loop okay it will become red hot you will do this under blue flame as it has high temperature and then your nichrome wire loop will you will allow it to cool a little bit and it cools down in fraction of seconds okay so you are you should not take your loop outside your zone of working zone okay or a septic zone okay it should be nearby your bunsen burner but not in the blue flame okay now after cooling that what you will do you will open your uh, test tubes okay the plugs or the caps of your test tube they should be operated they also should be opened or operated near the bunsen burner near the aseptic zone and see the way they are opened here okay if you are using your right hand for inoculation then uh, you should hold your tubes in left hand and you should try to open your test tubes by right hand itself okay you are also uh, holding your wire loop in right hand so don't forget so you have to keep all this together near your or uh, in between your aseptic zone okay then after that what you will do you will first uh, flame um, yeah you will just flame sterilize or you will pass your tubes the rim of your tubes from the blue flame okay as the air outside air should not pass from it and should not um, interfere uh, your sample by contamination okay so after that you will dip your flame sterilized loop in your suspension or say your inoculum and you will get a loop full of uh, bacterial culture transferred to your new sterile uh, for example newton brought tube okay so here you are doing the inoculation so after inoculation again first you have to flame pass your rim of your test tubes both the test tubes and close them and after that lastly you can heat sterilize your loop again okay so this is the basic aseptic technique that i have revised here then about inoculation and isolation okay so inoculation and isolation are very important points here so further on i may use isolation word or inoculation or inoculum so firstly we will see what is inoculation so inoculation is a method where a tiny previous sample okay a very small part of a previous sample or a tiny part of a, your colony is used as inoculum and is introduced to, to a new sterile media for growth and reproduction okay so you must have seen your uh, mother setting curd in kitchen okay so what she does she uses previous curd as inoculum okay and she mix that in the lukewarm milk right so the previous uh, curd will have some uh, say lactic acid bacilli growing in it so that will be the inoculum here and when the favorable conditions are there and uh, not just condition the temperature is well maintained and everything is good for the bacteria or the bacilli here it will start growing okay so that is the purpose we need inoculum okay and it is a uh, very small uh, quantity it is in very small quantity that we require okay even a loop full of your uh, or the loop of your wire loop okay it contains very very less amount of the sample okay so that is sufficient for your uh, laboratory experiments right then isolation or isolating method is one where we aim to get a pure bacterial or fungal colony which is isolated or separated from the sample okay so bacteria they are present everywhere we know that okay not just bacteria i should say here microbes they are present everywhere so for example here in case of soil sample we know that millions of microbes are present okay not just bacteria there are some uh, cyst of say any parasite or protozoa then fungal spores are there some algae is present okay so it depends okay your sample may have millions of microbes but it depends on what your aim is or what is 
uh, what is that which you are looking for okay whether you are looking for starch degrading microbes whether you are looking for lactose fermenting microbes etc so here we need to focus on one in which we are interested and try to separate that particular bacteria or fungi okay now you isolate it and get it subcultured as a pure culture now isolation methods mostly which we use or widely which we use are strict plate pour plate and spread plate after dilution okay so we need pour plate and for spread plate we need serial dilutions okay so now here you can see in a given picture here this is a very crowded uh, bacterial plate okay there are many tiny very very pinpoint or tiny microbial uh, sorry bacterial colonies are growing and some are quite big enough that we can easily see here so from this particular plate it gets very difficult to isolate or pick a single colony okay so this is not isolation this is a crowded plate so for this purpose to get a single cell separated as a single cell will grow and multiply to form a colony okay so we need to separate a cell from other cells so that it grows in a pure colony and we can isolate that okay as we cannot see just a single cell on our media plate when the cell grows and multiply and gets converted into a colony then and then only we can visually say that yes there is a colony growing okay so we need a we need to uh, get or we need to uh, at least see or observe that particular bacterial colony that is um, isolated or separated from other colonies on the plate okay it is not touching any other colony or there are no small pinpoint colonies growing very near to your uh, colony okay which you think is isolated so isolated colony must be very very pure okay so now about firstly we will talk about is broth cultures okay liquid cultures so broth cultures are liquid cultures which are used to grow bacteria in laboratories so broth can be used for biochemical testing enrichment of sample etc okay so depending on your experiment you may need here and there your broth uh, media broth for say enrichment or for some biochemical testing okay or even uh, you may need to filter your broth okay so that depends on your kind of experiment so you use clean glassware for media preparation you autoclave that let the media cool down to rt rt is room temperature here and under septic conditions as i mentioned in the first slide you inoculate the broth and then you can keep it for incubation so mostly we keep broths on rotary shaker okay for incubation or use it as per your experimental require like for say blood cultures or for sterility testing so that depends on the purpose of your experiment yeah so here in this particular picture you can see uh there are very isolated too many colonies which you can easily pick okay so this is the method that is streak plate or streaking where we use a loop full of culture and we yes when it comes for isolation or when your teacher says that uh, do isolation from this particular milk sample or water sample or soil sample then what you do you use strict plate method where you just need your sample wire loop or septic uh, conditions like bunsen burner or you can be working under uh, lf okay and a sterile media plate that's all and you can do streaking so routinely streaking or streak plate method is used for isolation so what you require you require a micro wire loop sample or a bacterial suspension and sterile media agar plate so under septic conditions a loop full of sample is streaked in say t streak method or four or five quadrant method so the method of streaking depends on you what you have been taught as there are various streaking methods it depends on person uh, 
in uh, for which he or she is confident about getting a isolation okay the aim here is just to get a isolated colony okay you should get isolation a proper isolation as shown here okay a proper isolation as shown here so that should or you you should aim for that always so no matter which method you use here but you should be able to get isolation you should master your skills okay now this is from my video a slide from my video uh, already two parts of strict plate method are uploaded on my channel you can check it out okay so this one the picture in your left side which is titled as bad isolation you can compare this picture with one which is on your right side okay so here also four met four quadrant technique is used but there is no isolation okay the streak marks you can see there is a lot of bacterial growth on streak or your streak marks okay and in one the plate which is on your right side you can see there are isolated colonies okay so this is a good isolation plate and these are the different streaking methods which one can use so it depends on you and in which or for which method you are confident for getting isolation so that depends on you so remember here streaking actually actually needs a lot of practice okay to um, get a hold on and get confidence in you building that yes in one go i can get a isolation now about spread plate or lawn cultures so spread plate is uh, used in experiments where lawn or carpet growth is required okay we don't need here isolation we need a fully grown uh, lawn growth is required okay so for example in case of bacteriophage typing or antibiotic sensitivity assay for these kind of experiments or your practicals you will need spread plate or lawn culture uh, technique okay so for this particular method where you actually need a lawn culture undiluted or thick bacterial suspension is used pipette alcohol and gla glass spreader and sterile media agar plate is required okay so under aseptic conditions a small aliquot of suspension is pipetted out or media plate and a glass spreader which is alcohol flame sterilized is used to spread the suspension evenly on agar plate to get a lawn growth okay so you have to rotate your plate 360 degree while you are using or you are spreading by using a glass spreader okay so then and then only you will get such lawn growth okay so after spreading you in case of antibiotic sensitivity assay you um, place your antibiotic disc and you keep it for incubation okay so as the incubation conditions are provided everything is favorable for the bacteria here the bacteria will grow and in or simultaneously the antibiotic will also diffuse in the agar okay so here that's the reason why you are seeing a clear zone so this is zone of inhibition the antibiotic has inhibited the growth of bacteria which is uh, surrounding it now uh, again said spread plate technique is used when you need isolation okay so spread plate and lawn plate so lawn culture technique so lawn culture you can remember it as uh, for antibiotic sensitivity assay and spread plate technique you remember it as when you do serial dilution of say you have given 10 grams of soil sample and you know that millions of bacteria present in soil sample so after uh, vortexing your mixture getting it properly mixed you start performing serial dilution so that the load of bacteria gets serially diluted okay and then you uh, spread plate or you take aliquots of last three dilutions say 10 raised to minus 6 minus 7 and minus 8 and you plate it out okay here also everything is done under aseptic conditions uh, alcohol glass spreader is used after flame sterilization and after getting say 100 microliters of aliquot on your uh, agar plate you do uh, or you spread that 
aliport on your plate okay and after incubation you get bacterial colonies on your surface okay so mostly uh, by tenders to 6 and 7 mostly you get isolation okay sometimes if say other sample is given which is highly populated then you may get isolation in tenders to 8 as well okay then next is about pore plate so pore plate is uh, where media is serially diluted oh, sorry uh, the sample is serially diluted uh, so mostly from 10 raised to minus 6 minus 7 and minus 8 a sample is taken okay aliquot is taken in a sterile petri dish and a sterile molten agar which is sufficiently cooled why i have written here sufficiently cool because the molten agar should not be too hot that the microbes from your aliquot die and it should not be too cold that after pouring it gets immediately solidified and you could not mix your uh, sample which you have taken on your sterile plate okay so the molten agar should be sufficiently cool okay? and then it is poured and mixed properly so this also everything is done under aseptic conditions okay so here we take aliquot in a empty sterile plate and then we pour molten agar on it and mix it and let it cool or another method which is used here is uh, aliquot is added to your molten agar but okay the tube which holds your molten agar and it should be sufficiently cooled and then it is poured and swirled swirled is you try to mix your media and your sample or the aliquot and then it is kept for incubation okay so as shown here in diagram you can do pore plate method next is tap culture so a agar deep tube is used in this method which does not have a slope like agar slant okay you don't see any slope here a straight needle that is a stabbing needle is used for inoculation and under aseptic conditions needle is also flame sterilized as we flame sterilize our nichrome wire loop and let it cool and then it is inserted into your bacterial suspension and then it is used to stab or puncture the agar okay it is straight it is stabbed or puncture in agar is made in agar deep tube and then it is kept for incubation so this particular method is mostly used for a uh, test like gelatin liquefaction or for stock cultures where you need to store them and even for motility testing okay for uh, example for protease for checking the motility you can use this particular method then next is stroke culture so stroke culture is uh, a method where a tube which has a agar slope which is also known as agar slant is used okay in this method under uh, septic conditions a uh, inoculum from a pure isolated colony or a master plate is used as inoculum okay and a general zigzag stroke is made on uh, slope and it is kept for incubation so you can see here a zigzag stroke is made okay so on that streak mark your culture will grow on incubation so this particular method is used for slide agglutination or for other diagnostic test okay so these were all culture methods which are most widely used for aerobic cultures okay i hope this video is helpful to you all thank you for watching do like share and subscribe to my channel keep supporting thank you